This is the Puget Sound Antique Radio Association's uh, annual August swap meet. And uh, we had a pretty good turnout this year. This is about the same size it has been every year. But uh, this one was for our 50th anniversary. Uh, had a special area set up just for the uh, club brass. And uh, that gave a little more space for uh, vendors. One of the few things I saw at the show this time that I wish I could have come away with was this Predicta. At 750 bucks, uh, most folks just looked at it and smiled. <laughs> A lot of parts chassis. Uh, not a lot of empty cabinets though. Mostly just chassis. So there's a good selection of console and tabletop sets and a lot of good quality ones here this year. This Atwater Kent battery set though was gorgeous. At a hundred bucks uh, with the battery doors inside. Unfortunately, I'm trying to get away from collecting battery sets, so I had to pass on that one. And I also blew all my money within the first five minutes. Nice little zenith there. You usually find a decent amount of equipment, oscilloscopes, old and new. I actually wound up with a pretty neat piece of equipment from this show. Uh, folks brought out records, stereo equipment. A Casio keyboard. A bunch of AM FM tuners from the 70s and 80s. Some uh, other neat, neat things here. I actually saw at least half a dozen RCA 100 loudspeakers. Way, way more than I've ever seen in one show. And of course a good selection of tubes transmitting and otherwise. However, uh, there wasn't as so much military gear as I expected. This was probably the only bench that actually had military gear on it. And a, a good, healthy selection of tubes and, uh, I'll take a Telefunken chassis. Plenty of test gear. Test gear doesn't seem to move as fast as it used to. Some pretty neat, uh, Western Electric telephony equipment. Unfortunately, because I was part of the setup crew, I didn't actually spend as much time digging through all the little boxes and things as I would normally, and also because I was out of cash, so there wasn't really any point in finding something I really wanted. There's a copy of Tube Lore. I wish I'd had the money to buy that, but uh, yeah. Maybe some other day. There were a few other books that would, uh, got donated to the club that I'd like to have. We'll say there weren't as many console sets at this one. Plenty of tabletop sets, but not a ton of consoles. It's usually the one thing folks like to get rid of. I did not grab this DeForest DL5, though. They're all dud tubes, but I did come back to this guy and pick up at least one Arcturus and a good 688G. You can never have too many of those. My silver tone. Another few uh, later, later zeniths. Always a good selection of Atwater Kent stuff too, but the Atwater Kent stuff never seems to move much. Yes, sir. Oh, I missed that Magnavox speaker. I have one of those. The radial 17 there. Surprisingly, I saw at least two radial 18s at this event that actually had lamp hoods. 
and a good selection of uh, 20s copies of uh, radio periodicals. I do enjoy collecting those. All sorts of really nice early boxed parts. I love the graphics on a lot of these. Battery stuff, though, not really selling all that well. There's some folks in the club that still specialize in it, but man, is it hard. I also like the little uh, the battery eliminators. I have a few of those just because they're neat little pieces of history. Beautiful graphics on that set. More and more tubes. Uh, we did actually have a testing area set up at uh, this meet, along with the rest of our others, for testing tubes. Here's something I wish I could have picked up. I didn't ask how much it was. A complete aerial set. I believe I have one of General Electric's. That's just a neat little accessory. Last year we actually had someone bring in a Zenith Baby Stratosphere. No takers, though. A lot of cabinet damage. Didn't see anything quite that neat this time. We're also trying to branch out a little more. We were trying to invite folks out that had other electronic but non-directly radio-related things like amplifiers and guitars in the hopes to broaden the horizons. And try and get more new members. This guy had quite a few really good examples. This is Zenith. I believe there's a Stromberg Carlson. And I forget what that one was. That was a pilot. Beautiful, beautiful sets. With uh, prices to match. Yet another later Zenith. And this gentleman here specializes in knobs. He's almost at every show. Odds are he'll have what you're looking for, except if you're looking for Firestone knobs like I am, in which case, MSLL. This would definitely be very useful for somebody. <laughs> you're always going to find a box of escutcheons and glass. I've gotten kind of lucky with those. Sometimes you get uh, pieces of grill cloth out of there, too. One of several uh, Grebe sinker phases. Saying the show, they're always beautiful. Okay. This uh, rather unusual tuner, I get the feeling it was probably a kit built or built from an ad or a, an article. Nonetheless, very, very neatly done on a Crosley pup. This club member has always had really, really good looking pieces. I've picked up one or two from him in the past. So my son so, saw it and he's like, oh, they've got a wall box. It doesn't actually play. How are you? No. Go that's good. Those are one that's not, the real ones, were, those were separate buttons. That's the wrong one for you. Yeah, I know. That's fine because it's only 100 select. Yeah, I need uh, all the letters or all the numbers. And actually, it's funny, they put a pin on that. Did you see that? Another Grebe. Some beautiful little mantle sets at this one. I said a lot of neat little big plated wood mantle sets. Oh, and a collection of bricks. It's 
Some of this stuff actually wound up left on the curb for his freebies, which was real nice of uh, whoever took their stuff back. Thank you for that. All kinds of books and guides. I did get at least one very nice copy of Writers from this show. And on the corner there, that is an Electrolux battery eliminator for 6 and 12 volt batteries. Kind of upset I didn't have the money to pick that up. It was a nice looking unit. Very handy, too. This gentleman had a specialty with battery sets, and he had quite the collection. Another Greeb. Neat collection of tubes. Some really nice preserved stuff. This is sort of getting down to the last row here. Normally this is where you'd start. I kind of went in and around. And uh, this was kind of neat. An original Zenith doublet antenna. And that's the flyer for the annual Aurora, Oregon swap meet. If you ever have the chance to go to it, it's a very cool little town. There's some great little antique stores there. And uh, they use the local Grange for their swap. Now this, I actually wound up coming away with. I'm going to try not to miss another year of it now that I'm not in college anymore. Oh yeah, you have a lot of time now. I really wish I had more money at this point. This guy had some neat stuff laying around. And at everything half off, I probably could have gotten some good deals. Plenty of extra controls, tube adapters. Pretty neat uh, little power B unit. I think it was a Bremer Tully. But ultimately, I got two things I was very happy with and did not expect to see at this show. And I think we should go take a look at those now. So I didn't get a ton at this show. Uh, really just picked up some, some cheaper items at the end and uh, two really cool pieces. These were actually the cheaper the things that I bought. This, I, 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 you don't often find original boxes uh, for a lot of these consumer items. And they just got thrown away most of the time. The fact that they survive at all is pretty impressive. Uh, this one, it looks like whoever owned it must have opened it from the bottom. When they took it out, and it looks like, yeah, so the cardboard is still in there. There's no radio in it, unfortunately. This was a Zenith model, uh, can't remember, a 3, something, 4B-314. Either way, it literally has had a sticky note on it that said free box. I thought it was like free with purchase of something else. No, it was just a free box. I love the graphics on it. I love the fact that most companies had their own custom tape. It just, that's just really neat. So I got that for nothing. This I picked up because I liked that it was already in an, a box designed for it. And also because I was under the mistaken impression that I could use it for something that I bought at the show. Uh, no, actually, this is a carrying case for a uh, Sylvania 3AP1 oscilloscope CRT. Uh, I do actually have a scope or two that takes these. Well, it's, it's nice to have a spare and you know, cool advertising at that. Um, I was kind of hoping this had a different base. I didn't look at it. I thought this was going to be a 3KP one, which would have been really nice, but uh, no such luck there. But hey, you can't win at everything. So I got those. Uh, I did also get one dud Arcturus tube, uh, the 6A8G. I always collect the 6A8Gs because most of my radios use them in the head end. And uh, I often find metal 6A8s in there or 6A8GTs. And I like putting the, uh, the proper aesthetic tube back in place. That's, that's just me though, not everybody does that. 
Now, the next thing, and I gotta clear this out here. The next thing was actually something I did not anticipate to see. I'd never seen one before. But it was sitting underneath one of the vendor's tables. And I snagged it before I recorded the walk around. Actually, I did all my purchasing before I did the walk around. That was later in the day. And that's this guy. Uh, here's the housing that it goes in. So uh, the club president and I are both unfortunately into miniature oscilloscopes. I often have to fight her for them. Uh, she did not see this one on her first walkthrough. So I was able to snag it for 20 bucks. I saw it under there and I thought, wow, that is a really tiny display for an oscilloscope. But it also had no branding on it. There was absolutely nothing on there. And I noticed that the uh, escutcheon here has a magnifying lens on it. And the fact that the cabinet doesn't have a lot of depth. You know, it's like six inches across. So what on earth were they using for a tube? Well, something that I have been looking for forever, and this actually uses one, is an RCA 913 octal uh, one inch CRT. So I don't know how obvious it is, but that, that right there, the tube that's about the size of a 6L6, that is our CRT. The end of it has a small glass lens on it with the phosphor coating. And yeah, that, it, it's literally only about that long, and it's adorable. And then there's this magnifying lens on it to bring it up to about mm, two inches. Uh, but it took a little bit of research. Uh, there is a model number on the back. This was actually produced as a kit by Fordarson, and uh, the Transformer Company. And it is a model, or a type, I should say, 11K16. I think this is the only uh, oscilloscope kit they produced. Uh, finding documentation on these is not easy. I have some stuff downloaded from World Radio History that includes a full set of instructions and schematic and parts list for this. So uh, getting it to work should not be very hard, assuming the 913 is good. I really hope it is because these have kind of dried up uh, and I wanted one to play with for the longest time and I got really lucky. I just saw this kicking around under there. Um, now I took it apart so I could uh, fix up some dents that are in this panel. There's actually two separate pieces. There's an aluminum, this nice face plate, and then there's a steel plate behind it uh, that provides rigidity when it's mounted to the cabinet. And then your inputs are actually some uh, pin or uh, tip, tip jacks on either side, which are not labeled. Uh, so that's, that's kind of inconvenient. Uh, but this has uh, does have a few tubes in it. It does have amplified inputs. We have a 6X5 for, for uh, rectification. There is a 1V for the uh, second anode voltage for the CRT. There is an 885 Thyrotron in here for providing the sweep. And then there are a pair of, I think there's 6J7s uh, down inside there. And those guys provide the amplification for the vertical, uh, vertical and horizontal. Um, and then there's a bunch of capacitors directly underneath the CRT, and that is for adjusting the sweep on there, horizontal and vertical. I gotta clean all these potentiometers, but the thing overall is in very clean shape. It got dented a little bit at one point. Um, I will say there is not a lot of room underneath the chassis on this thing. It's all very tightly packed in there, but it's very neatly set up, and I'm hoping most of those resistors, and I love the paper labels, and I'm hoping most of those are good. The tricky part will be the electrolytics because they're all cans and um, there's four of them up here as well as some smaller dry electrolytics. I'd like to be able to save the cans and put the new ones below. There might be enough depth to do that with new Nishikons. So that's pretty cool and uh, I hope to have a, a, a full video on that at some point. Uh, again, I got other stuff I gotta complete before I can move on to this. I did try bringing it up on the Variac. I didn't turn it up very much, and I didn't get anything, so I backed off on it. Uh, it, it needs some work. There's some uh, electrical connections that are exposed below, so it's probably best for me to leave it alone uh, until that is repaired. So, that was this was just sort of an unexpected find. My second walk through, I just saw this underneath the table with no label on it, and I thought, holy crap, you know, that's really tiny, and yeah, it was... Really, really cool to finally get to see one of these. Um, let me see if I can't pop this out of its uh, 
socket here. Yeah, so that is our one inch CRT. Isn't that adorable? <laughs> of course, I kind of screwed up my mounting system here. There's a, uh, a collar that tries to keep this lens in place and it's, it's tightened down about as far as it can go. I probably ought to put some rubber or something in there to, to give it a little more grip. Anyway, let me get that out of the way because I gotta go grab the, the coolest thing that I found at the show this time. And something, again, was not expecting. It was actually the first thing I saw and I, I blew all my money on it. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I had very little left over to even pick this up or even the, the, uh, the one CRT. Okay. And last but not least, I bought some luggage. Some luggage with a retractable set of antenna on either side. Huh? Yeah, so. This this is by far the coolest thing I've, I've ever gotten at a swap meet. I feel incredibly lucky to have it. And uh, I'm going to try and take care of it as best I can. Because it's, it's survived a fairly long time without a whole lot of abuse. The, the uh, Tolex on here isn't in great shape, but the rest of it is just really, really nice. Anyway. I have wanted one of these since I started getting into the TV collecting side of the vacuum tube hobby. Um, unfortunately, I can't really open the lid that far. I have to set it that way. Let's see if I can't get you around. So, for those of you who are not familiar, this is a Pilot Radio Company TV 37 from about 1948. Uh, the Pilot apparently did make other televisions. This is the smallest they offer, the three inch picture tube. It uses a 3KP4, yeah, it's 3KP4 CRT, which are not very easy to find. Um, and it sold for 99 bucks. This, is, this was dirt cheap for a television at the time. And because it was built post-war, it doesn't have channel 1, and it also has, it has the standard channels 2 through 13. So this will pick up, um, you can cook a VCR up to it or whatever, standard uh, RF modulator. But this has the original uh, carrying case with the built-in antennas and everything, which is just... Well, okay, I will say I don't actually know if the antenna system uh, is original or not. I need to check on that. Uh, I haven't haven't looked up the cases. I usually see the TVs loose. I had a chance to buy one of these several years ago. I didn't have the money for it. Uh, for reference, I paid 200 bucks for this as it sits right here. That seems to be about par, uh, and I am super happy with it. The cabinet on these appears to be made out of, uh, like, masonite? It's been painted, and there's, there is some wood up front. Uh, let me just lift this up slightly. I gotta be gentle though, because someone took the screws that hold the cabinet top out of the set, and it is kind of wedged in here. And I'm trying as gentle as I can. There. Uh, yeah, so your little tuning window right here. There's uh, two separate setups for tuning here. They, it's hard to see. Uh, the tuning band is actually split, so you have channels two through six on the bottom of the dial and seven through 13 on the top. It's white and black. There's a uh, selector switch down here. Contrast control, brightness control, on, off, and volume over there. Now, this was cool by itself. It was in good shape, but they said, well, it also comes with paperwork. Well, it didn't come with the original instruction manuals, unfortunately. It did come with someone had got an original Sam's Photo Fact for it. So, fantastic documentation here. Everything I need to do the recap. I got that, but this was what was really neat. 
Uh, this is a television picture tube warranty card from 1978 uh, for a 3KP4. And it specifically says this is for a museum. And uh, yeah, this is from a company in Burien, Washington called Clearbeam. Uh, apparently they did picture tube rebuilding. And I know that because when I took the lid off and I looked at the picture tube, and I'm not going to do that here. Uh, I don't need to make another mess on the bench. But the, uh, the electron gun assembly in this set has been separated from the rest of the envelope. Uh, had the cathode assembly and electron gun rebuilt and then reattached the CRT and had a new vacuum pulled. And there is a obvious separation at the neck where the two ends were heated and spliced back together uh, in a glass fusing setup. Which is really cool. I've never actually seen a rebuilt CRT. That used to be the, the, uh, the cheaper way to get life out of another CRT. Instead of buying a whole other tube, you'd simply have the uh, the electron gun assembly cut away from the rest of the CRT bell. Uh, you put a new cathode material on there, and then fuse the two pieces back together, and uh, you can squeeze more life out of it. I'm surprised they did that with an electrostatic CRT, uh, but then again, this is a rare tube. But the fact that they were still rebuilding, or, or uh, had the ability to get rebuilt CRTs in 78, I mean... That's pretty impressive. So the odds are this CRT is probably practically brand new. Unless it was demonstrated a lot, there's no way to really tell right now until I get it all working. Uh, this is actually why I bought that uh, that oscilloscope CRT, because I thought the 3AP1 would work in a 3KP4. Unfortunately, they have different bases, different pinouts. The one that I bought is only good for an oscilloscope. Uh, there is in a, a 3KP1 oscilloscope version of this tube. Those are apparently not too hard to find, and some folks use them for testing them, especially since uh, these TVs are series strong. There's no power transformer, and the uh, CRT uh, filament on this guy does get whacked a little bit on startup. So most, uh, there's, a, there's I've seen several different ways to try and protect this, the filament on this with uh, Zener diodes or clamping setups, and the most common is to use a um, uh, well, a CL90 current limiting uh, resistor has a, a cold resistance like 120 ohms, and then when it, when the uh, set warms up, it drops to about three. So the inrush current is extremely low, and everything turns on very very gently. Um, I honestly should be putting them in some more of my TVs, but for the series strung sets, I'm going to buy some of those, especially for this to get one in there. Heck, some folks even separate and isolate the uh, filament connection. For the CRT with a with a uh, small power transformer, so that it gets its own completely insulated 6.3 volt AC source. I don't think I'm going to go that crazy with it. I'll put a CL90 and I'll put fuses in it, protect everything. But um, yeah, it's it, it's in pretty good original shape, and I want to keep it that way. I already glued this piece here on the front back into place. I had a good crack underneath it, so I've uh, got some tight bond in there and got that cleaned back up. But everything inside is nice and clean. It does look like there was a little bit of work done, but I haven't flipped it over to look underneath the chassis to see if anything was done in there. That's that's a video for a later date. But that's all I've got for this one. Uh, this event was a big undertaking for us, our 50th anniversary, and um, it was just fun to be part of the volunteer crew for once. I'd never done it before. Uh, the Zenith that I worked on, the uh, 6S, 6, uh, 6.32, whatever, uh, that worked out really well. I had the Mariners baseball game going. And uh, yeah, it was, everyone had an excellent time. The weather was fantastic. And I can't wait to do it all over again next year. Uh, but until then, uh, thanks for watching. And I'll be back with something cool here soon. I got a bunch of projects to wrap up.